Matthew McCabe. Welcome to Miracle Voices. Each episode, we will be delving into stories of forgiveness, healing, and transformation that have come about from integrating the principles of the book, A Course in Miracles. If you want to learn more about A Course in Miracles, visit www.acim.org. If you'd like to visit the Miracle Voices site, please go to www.miraclevoices.org. If you feel inspired to make a love offering, please visit us at miraclevoices.org forward slash donate. All donations go to support the work of the Foundation for Inner Peace, the publisher of A Course in Miracles. Now here's your program. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Miracle Voices. I'm your co-host, Matthew McCabe, and I'm here with my co-host, Tam Morgan. Tam, how are you doing this St. Patrick's Day? Very well. Been working with leprechauns all morning. Okay. Let's hear your Irish accent. Can you do one? Mine? I I don't know. I sound more like a pirate. Yeah. I start, <laughs> I start Irish, and then it turns into Jamaican somehow every time, and I'm like, how does this happen? And then it goes back and forth. <laughs> I think I need a good beer to do it. Bonnie Jones, welcome to Miracle Voices. Bonnie's our guest today. How are you doing, Bonnie? I am doing awesome, Matt. Thank you. Uh, yeah, especially through the little technical difficulties there. I'm on board here. <laughs> so that, thank you. Our, it's already yeah. been erased from memory over here. I don't even know what you're talking okay. about. Yeah, okay. it's, it's it's the leprechauns <laughs> coming to visit. Yeah. In Hawaii, we call them Menahunis. Well, Bonnie, where where are you calling from today? <laughs> today, I'm in Arizona. I oh, live part of the year in Hawaii and part of the year in Arizona. Yeah, okay. Two places that don't do the daylight savings as of yet. <laughs> no, wait, Hawaii. <laughs> wait, I think Hawaii does. Arizona doesn't. No, no, Hawaii in, no. doesn't either. Hawaii doesn't, and Indiana no. doesn't no. either. Yeah. Oh, really? So, I did, didn't yeah. know that. But yeah. there is a bill that was just introduced to get rid of daylight savings time, I think, that happened right. yesterday. Mm-hmm. Or mm-hmm. give you a choice. Or I'm so confused by all of it. I love that we're all just getting to decide whatever time we want it to be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's making agree. time <laughs> continuously less meaningful. And then it's going to oh, be Miller good. time for half the population. <laughs> really? Certainly today. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> well, Bonnie want to hear your story, maybe you can tell us how A Course in Miracles came into your life. I'd be happy to share that. Um, well, um, I, I accepted the Lord when I was about eight years old, um, you know, in a traditional Christian way, and uh, went through Sacred Hearts Academy in Hawaii, um, U of H, so forth and so on. And I was actually introduced to A Course in Miracles in high school. Uh, way over my head at the time, but uh, it planted a seed, and I I was very curious about it. And as my life rolled out, uh, every once in a while, it would pop up. And I actually had the book, I was excited about it, and then I went through some pretty traumatic challenges, um, pretty well cleaned everything out, went the minimalist way, and I actually gave the book uh, to the goodwill. Uh, and it has been just actually recently that the Course in Miracles has been tapping at my heart again. And um, how, how I ended up here, actually, is uh, I couldn't sleep one night. It was about three o'clock in the morning. and I actually started listening to one of your podcasts, Matt and Tam. And I thought, oh, this is like being at home. It seems like I've been on such a long journey, and now it feels like I'm back at home. And uh, I was scrolling down and um, put in a little information, gave you my email, and I thought, well, you know, why not? And click, sent it, and next thing I know, uh, Matt gave me a call, and here I am today. <laughs> That's great. You know, it's so funny. The guest last week said she found A Course in Miracles at Goodwill. So it's like full circle. Nothing's wasted in uh, in God's economy, right? It's all good. That's will. true. It's, it's God will. <laughs> it is God, God will. You're right. Oh, I like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Bonnie, as you started practice a course in miracles, did you notice any changes in your life as you went along? Oh my goodness! Um, where do I begin? Uh, you know, it was subtle. It was very subtle. Um, 
of course, I knew the Holy Spirit. And I, I, I know when he's tapping me on the shoulder and saying, hey, Bonnie, uh, let me guide you. Um, I have a, a, a pretty strong personality. Um, I'm also in involved with um, positive intelligence. And so my, my high, I'm a stickler and, you know, uh, hyper achiever. I have a restless energy as well. And the Holy Spirit works with me on that quite often. And uh, so as I was walking through uh, this, this journey uh, of basically what we'd be talking about is domestic violence, uh, the Course in Miracles kept popping up into my heart and even as I was going through this there was a gentle I guess conversation about forgiveness and you know I you know the definition I actually looked this up the ACIM definition of forgiveness is forgiveness recognizes what thought your brother did to you um, has has not occurred and I was, I was pondering that and I thought, well, you know, <laughs> I had the bruises and the, you know, hospital visits and, you know, hiding from my family, uh, that occurred, that occurred. Um, but as I sit here today, uh, it, it's, it's not a blur and there's such a f- forgiveness around it. And I have such a piece of what I've been through. Uh, it, it's only a miracle. It, it has to be a miracle. Um, you know, I've, I've talked to many women and men, actually, that have been through domestic violence. And it's so hard to give up the, the victimhood, I would say, um, or the shame, only if I... Or the questions about uh, from outside influences, um, you know, wh- why are you putting up with this? Why did you go back to them? Uh, that that there, I had to forgive myself, and the only way that I could have done that is um, through the Course in Miracles and with the Holy Spirit. Honey, we're hearing some background noise, like are, like maybe some hangers or something that's being played with. Yeah, thank you. I is that better? Yeah, that's better. Okay. Okay. Excuse me. And um, so um, that being said, you know, I, and again, you know, is the the awareness, um, you know, as Course Miracle says, you know, the origin of the problem. Well, the origin of the problem, I was, I was young and I was, uh, thought I knew more than I did. and I was bound to determine to make things work, no matter how that looked. Uh, and um, my, as I call him, my husband, uh, you know, he had a history of uh, abuse uh, for to himself, uh, addiction, uh, all through his family, uh, horrendous domestic abuse. Um, and of course, I was a privy of that. Uh, he lived, his family was in Michigan, and we met when uh, we were both in Hawaii. He was in the military, and I was in high school. He was nine years older than I. So, um, first seeing that, you know, the origin of the problem, and then, as I say, you know, deciding to forgive. Uh, that that was that was a huge challenge for for many years. Uh, just that angst in in my person, you know. How could he have done this? Why did I? What was it that that kept pulling me back? And and then in the midst of all of that, uh, we uh, had a child, my son, and that is when I said. I am not going to bring this child into this environment. Um, either we're going to get counseling and we're, we're going to move forward with this, or I, I'm leaving. I'm, I'm taking our son and I'm leaving. And uh, to this day, you know, I'm, I'm so thankful for having that, that child because it gave me the strength. Um, and of course, you know, being mother bear, 
the wanting to protect him and not allowing this abuse to keep carrying on in the universe. So uh, um, during that time, though, I was truly learning what love means as a parent. And, uh, and, and, and that created the even more of a chance to forgive, uh, opportunity to forgive and to uh, realize that this was uh, maybe didn't have to be my journey, but it was my journey. And that in the future, this will be to my benefit. And I know the Lord has his hand in everything. I know he protected me. I'm here sitting with you today. I'm, you know, many uh, people in domestic violence uh, do not get to this point. And um, to this very day, you know, I still talk to both of my sons about this on, on rare occasion. And, uh, you know, they, they're still kind of mind that, that, that kind of boggles their mind saying, you know, mom, we, we just can't imagine how you could forgive him. Well, as we know in the Course of Miracles is that I'm forgiving myself as well. And that will free us both up. And interestingly enough, um, as I, I had shared with you, Matt, previously, uh, we divorced. And uh, I remarried. And many years later, uh, <laughs> he actually showed up at our door. It was it was the most interesting miracle to date that I can think of right now in my life. Uh, we were living in a duplex, my second husband and I, and both our sons. And uh, there were a few homeless people there. And on occasion, you would hear the the cart being pushed down the street. And, you know, I never thought about it, never really paid attention. But we were sitting in the living room and we had the door open and, you know, the screen door was locked. And there was something different about this cart, the sound of this cart. And I go, what is it? And so, you know, I went on and next thing I know, um, this person is knocking at our door. And um, how I was sitting, I couldn't see uh, who was at the door. Uh, but my husband at the time, he looked up and he said, may I help you? And this gentleman that was at the door, he says, do you have any bottles that you would give me? And I knew his voice. And his name is Paul. And I thought, there is no way that that can be Mr. Paul Jones. And lo and behold, I looked over at my husband and he said, that is Paul. And I go, what? <laughs> so I got up and uh, we went and <laughs> we looked at each other through the screen door. And I said, oh, my goodness. I said, how are you doing? I mean, what a question. You know, he's pushing a cart. But I was such in shock. And so he told me, you know, he was homeless, uh, looking for bottles, uh, trying to get a job. Uh, he he had uh, just um, came through a, a horrendous experience with tuberculosis. And he was about a third of the physical man that I had known. Um, and we talked for probably about 20, 30 minutes. And he actually asked me to forgive him. And I said to him, I said, I am, I'm happy to forgive you. And I just want you to know, I, I had to forgive quite some time ago uh, for everyone concerned, including our son. So um, I handed it over to God and uh, he just held my hand and as the years have progressed, uh, you know, it fades away. But I've been, you know, if I, if I think about all those times, you know, I saw him picking up the wine bottle and knowing what those evenings were going to be like. Um, there's just compassion around him. Of course, there's, there's no fear or 
regret or, as I say, victimhood or pointing fingers. It's just, oh, you know, we all survived. We're moving forward. There's forgiveness. And the, you know, we want to bring beautiful energy into the universe around. So that is how I am here today. That's, that's a great story. And just rewinding a little bit uh, before you met your ex-husband again at your door, um, you had gone to a pastor and talked about, you know, the trouble you were having with how you were being abused physically. Can you talk about that? Yes. Um, very true. Very true. Uh, Let's see. Our son was about two weeks old, and um, he was you know, Paul was really drinking, but excessively. Uh, he was out of work. Um, and, and the beautiful thing here, I do want to step back one moment, is when he was sober, he was the most gentle human being walking the earth, and uh, very kind and loving. And when he started drinking, he was just a whole different man. So I came home from the hospital. Uh, of course, he was excited about the baby and so forth. But the alcohol took over. And uh, of course, I was in complete fear. Um, I actually left our son with him to go meet with this pastor. Uh, I knew he wouldn't hurt our son. And so I went to speak to the pastor and you know, they willingly opened their door, he and his wife, and we talked for quite some time. And actually, they came to pick me up. I, I walked to the store and they came to pick me up, took me to their home, uh, had a meal with them, had conversation. And towards the end, I asked the pastor, I said, what, what should I do? And he said to me, well, he said, uh, you know, the Lord is with you. Jesus isn't going to let anything happen to you. And I would suggest that you go back. And I looked at him like, are you serious about this? And he said, yeah. And so, you know, in hopes that I was being guided, you know, from a man of God. And so he took me back and I remember opening up the door. And there was the wine bottle about a third of the way, you know, had, he had drank about a third of the bottle. And there was a look in his eye. And I thought, I'm in a lot of trouble here. Now, the pastor didn't see this, apparently. He spoke with uh, Paul for a little while. And then uh, he says, OK, he says, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go. Uh, I'm just a phone call away if you need anything. And I just looked at him like, you have no idea. You just dropped me off in the lion's den. Sure enough, um, it got so bad that uh, he, he beat me with a dowel stick. Um, but the Lord just watched over our son. He slept through the whole thing. Uh, I ended up in the hospital that night. And a physician asked me if I would, if I wanted to, uh, you know, call the police and, you know, write a report. And I was so scared. I said, no. And so the physician says, well, I do have to report this. Uh, and I said, I understand that. And uh, so I went back. Uh, by that time, uh, he had sobered up quite a bit uh and then then of course you know the whole i'm sorry i you know this will never happen again you know we have a good life here we just have a little boy and and i just looked at him and i just thought I'll never ever uh, trust you again i really didn't trust him at that point but at that point was when i just thought you know i have to do something different well as time went on uh, a few days later my mother and sister, of course, wanted to come over and see me and the baby. And and uh, by that time, I was so black and blue. I just told Paul, I said, just tell them that I'm at the store. And, of course, my family knew. And 
I ended up hiding in the closet. Again, uh, our child slept through all of this. So this went on um, for a couple of years. And um, when I finally made the, the, the decision, um, one of us, something major is going to happen to one of us is uh, one night we had moved and one night uh, he was playing with our son on the floor and I was making dinner and I was, I looked over watching him playing on the floor and sure enough, he had been drinking. And this vision came to my mind that one day I might just stab him to death. And I thought, this is not me. I. I have to get out of here and get clear and protect my son. And uh, sure enough, I, that, that was my path. That is when I turned. And uh, in the meantime, he had met another lady across the way. And he would go back and forth. And uh, one night, I just had a feeling that he was going to uh, show up. And he did. And my sister was living with me at the time. And we had a code. Uh, my sister was in the same room as my son. And I said, if I come in and I just tell you it's time to go, don't ask me any questions. Let's just get Tim and we're, we're out of here. And that, that happened. That happened. And uh, he tried to break the door down. And so uh, how we got around him, I have no idea. He's a big man, about six foot four, got around him, got down the steps. And uh, that was the beginning of, of me saying enough. Uh, so um, all of that, I was, I know I was well protected. Uh, the way I look today is all because of protection. Uh, so when I, I remember when he beat me with that Dell stick and I looked in the mirror, I thought, who is that? And will I ever be the same? Uh, I'm very happy to say I am. I, I healed uh, in, in every way possible, emotionally, physically, uh, mentally. And uh, I'm, I'm just happy to be here to share this. I've, I've uh, shared it in various venues, but nothing like this on this platform. So my heart goes out and I, I do hope that my story does help someone out there. Uh, I have talked with many, as I say, men and women uh, that have similar stories and uh, the support and the love uh, is really what we need. So yeah, it's mm -hmm. where I'm at today. <laughs> thank you, Bonnie. It's just, um, thank you. I know that's a very brave thing to share. Um, and I, I just want to offer and say that um, a common misperception is that uh, the course, the course's definition is, definition is indeed that forgiveness means um, awakening to the understanding that we're all one, we're all love, and none of this dream really happened. But as my one of my mother's most commonly used. Uh, sayings was don't mix levels so that's the truth but we are also kind of trapped in this dream in a world of form and absolutely in this dream you were beaten and you you were trapped and um and that's part of your story that you carry and the unraveling of it the work that you've done in your personal forgiveness can take you and help take you to the next and deeper level understanding. And so this is, there is no way that through practicing the course, you know, you, you would say, sorry, it, this never happened and big deal, get over it. It's not what it's about at all. And just as a, a storyteller myself, um, I find it amazing that if I was reading this in a book, for instance, that the bottle that you so feared 
because you knew the moment that he would drink from that, um, hit, that other personality would come in, uh, ended up in his path of pushing a cart and looking for bottles, you know, looking for these empty bottles and to, to get something out of, to still get something out of in a hopefully different way. Um, and how powerful that is uh, in, in this level. So uh, it's just funny how spirit works. And I'm very touched and I really thank you for sharing the way that you have. Thank you, Tam. Uh, you know, I never looked at it that way. The bottle image, how interesting. Hmm. And then the levels, yes, yes, you're 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 absolutely right about that. And I I um, I have no idea what level I'm at, <laughs> <laughs> nor, <laughs> nor uh, but yeah, that's that's very interesting. You're you're definitely bringing uh, uh, curiosity to me, curiosity. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Thank you. And the openness when one feels curious is like self-inquiry. And as we um, use the course as a guide to self-inquiry, uh, we do find, especially as you, or as one, not you, but as all of us develop a, a listening to that inner voice of truth everything starts to unfold. And then the experience of the oneness, um, which also brings another aspect and level of forgiveness. But when I say levels, it's not like one is at the bottom and you're at the dumb class and you know the other is. Uh, it's not about that kind of intelligence. It's truly about um, that experience of remembering that we're love and that we're one. And the, what aspect the dream teaches us uh, to remember that. So that, that's why, of course, it's such a good guide. You know, it's an anchor, or it can be an anchor, you know, with, the, with the, a, a good understanding of it. Um, to bring you and not judge you for what level you're at, anything, but just remind and remind and remind that we are all love and that spirits at, uh, spirits at work here for these uh, the unraveling of these stories. And as you do uh, forgive in the classic sense, and as you do move to healing, um, it, it heals us all. And uh, what a multi-dimensional forgiveness opportunity, Bonnie. I mean, you have your ex, Paul, that you have a forgiveness opportunity with, I'm sure this pastor you're, you're thinking, wow, this, this, this guy got it so wrong. Um, and he, he, you know, suggested I go back to my ex when I'm getting beaten. And then I got beaten as a direct result of it. So there's another dimension there. And I would imagine that, you know, there's grievances that harden and get, you know, we sit there and look at them and say, this is what happened. This is what happened. And it's just like, we just put the DVD on replay of all this terrible, toxic interaction. The, the thing that, you know, I I'm curious about, and I'm sure the listeners are too, is that how do you actually go about forgiving that grievance or that resentment about what happened? I mean, we, we fast forwarded to when you saw Paul and that was a very touching moment that you had with them, but how did you get there? Um, and what did it look like? Were you picking up the grievance and then putting it down and picking up, putting it down? Can you talk about that process a little bit? Sure. I, I'll be happy to. Um, yes, exactly. I, I, as I say, you know, I wanted everything to work. I wanted the perfect marriage. So whenever, you know, he, he was being himself, uh, I would be, oh, okay, we, we're going to do this. We're going to start again and I'm going to forgive him. And, you know, here we go again. Um, but there were stages of that, you know, and, and the longer we were together uh, and it, it, you know, same patterns, there was anger. I got to the point of being angry and, you know, I'm drawing the line and this is it. And then having the pressure from, you know, family and friends and, 
uh, you know, they look at me and just shake my head, like how much more is this going to go on? So my, my process was loving and being kind, even through the pain of it all. Uh, but in reality, I mean, the anger pushed me through. Uh, it gave me the strength or the illusion of it um, for how safe am I? How safe is our son? How safe is he? Um, so the on a daily basis, I would just ask, you know, for guidance. Uh, and there were days that I wasn't listening. I, I know, I know the Holy Spirit was talking to me, but I wasn't listening. I, I wanted to uh, create my own experience. But when I finally released, and as I say, I had that vision of possibly stabbing him, that scared me. And the forgiveness was, that's where I really felt it. And in, in Hawaii, we call it our na'o, which is our our belly button, you know, in the, in the core of my being, um, I could feel like a, not a fire. It was more like a warm blanket. Uh, and it gave me the security of you're going to be okay. You are okay. And you are not alone. And when that, reality and those thoughts started coming in and I could physically feel that that gave me the courage to forgive him because I didn't want to walk away and carry all of that with me I wanted to leave it there and move on and still you know I mean we had a son together so I knew that we would be seeing each other um I think that was probably the most difficult is when I had finally left and, you know, I, I really felt like I was in the process of forgiving and it was on a daily basis. Uh, that when I saw him, I thought, Oh, maybe I made, I made a poor decision. Maybe if I go back, he will change, which that was not the case at all. So I kept learning how to forgive and, and to, just sit and know that I was safe, safe and secure. And the, the more I felt that, the more, the deeper the forgiveness became. As I wasn't in the fight, flight, freeze mode any longer. Uh, so that, that is how it, it just started to grow. And then, um, as I started to heal, interestingly enough, uh, people came into my life that was either going through the same process or, or just coming out of a relationship such as this. Um, and uh, we started sharing. And I didn't come in from, oh, this is what he did to me. I would tell my story, they would tell their story, and then I would have the opportunity to share with them, uh, you know, I am in the process of forgiving him, me, and this whole situation. And of course, it depended where where the person was in their stage and their journey to uh, relate to that. But there was a seed there of of security, uh, and and I had many times, uh, you know, I when. When, especially women, uh, I had a yoga studio and I work with uh, people in trauma and that was part of it. I'm also a massage therapist. So um, trauma has, you know, it, it, how we carry it in the body, of course. And uh, amazing what comes out when you're giving someone a massage. Uh, they start talking and, you know, the, well, if you were in my situation, Bonnie, what would you do? And I said, I'm going to be very honest with you. And I would say, leave immediately immediately now if someone had told me that or they did try to tell me that it depends on what stage it was what stage of my forgiveness was 
Um, so it it's it's an ongoing process. Um, and just coming back to you know, just like we were talking about and how what the first miracles is all about is is love. Is is really loving ourselves and uh, seeing that person as love. Uh, so, does that answer what you're you were uh, questioning, Matt? Definitely, definitely did. Thank you for that, Bonnie. Can I jump in for a moment? Sure. Um, a couple of things that you said um, touched me here. Uh, you know, you were in a situation that was obviously untenable, um, and you were talking about, you know, you were trying to be kind and loving. Uh, also, because you saw who Paul really was without the alcohol. And so each time the alcohol wasn't around, it got, you know, you were trusting who he was without that. It's its own personality when a drug comes in and it brings a, a whole personality that's uh, very different uh, at times than anyone's normal personality. So it gets very, very confusing. Um, but loving and being kind without boundaries uh, sometimes is not smart for one in this level of evolution and form. And those boundaries really do matter. And it sounds like the, you know, the moment you saw the darkest part in your own self that you could kill a person and that you would in order to protect your son or just because you were, you had grown to be that hurt and that mistrustful of this darkness that was coming um, was such a point in your own darkness that to realize you didn't want that uh, and instead to choose that you weren't alone that there was another part of you that that offered safety um, was a really sounds like you know a holy instant where you got to know and it was it sounds like it was in different um, scales of times uh, but that uh, you got to see that darkness and forgive that in yourself so that you really understood what safety was and is. Is that, does that sound right? Absolutely, Tam. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, and in that, I, this is just a total separate question here. I was just curious because I think the listeners will be curious. Um, did you ever call that pastor again? Say, uh, look where this advice got me. <laughs> <laughs> Was there ever a come to Jesus with the old pastor? I never wanted to see him again in my life. Mm -hmm. And I didn't. Yeah. And so there's still some forgiveness there. Oh, yes. Because that's a pretty strong uh, bond between the two of you. and. Yes. And that forgiveness uh, may also be a tremendous relief and release for you when you get there. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I I, I haven't thought about him for such a long time, and uh, yeah, that's that's interesting. I am I'm going to ponder that whole. It's a hard one. There. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 But. And you know. Um, we, I say we, my sister and I, we really did not have uh, any strong father figure in our life. We, our brother, um, nine years older than I, uh, also an alcoholic. So, uh, you know, when when I put trust in another human being, especially a male at that vulnerable time in my life, um, and then I realized, oh, I made a huge mistake. You know, it's like the turtle going into the shell. You know, I'm never going to trust, especially a man again in my life, which, you know, I, I, I worked through that and knew it was foolish. But I was so hurt and I was scared and I didn't know where to go. Uh, and I thought that was a safe haven. 
So yes, you're you're absolutely right. I mean that is that is definitely. Uh, uh, I will be meditating on that one. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you bringing it up. Yeah. And in the world of shame and blame and all of this, you know, there's there's an aspect um, with Paul uh, that, as they say, that you you knew alcohol was a source of it. But what was the source of the pastor <laughs> um, saying, mm-hmm. go back to that and and that for, you know, finding that place in yourself to have trusted him. There's there's still some opportunity. I really do think there. Um can lighten you up. Thank you, Tam. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, sure. I really do. And yeah, I, I do. I want to just, you know, be a light through this process. Um, and and what's beautiful about what we're doing right now, you know, it, it's opening opportunities of uh, bits of darkness in me that I wasn't aware of, even through, you know, I, I've had some counseling and so forth. Uh, but this is just that, as you're saying, you know, at a different level yeah. and uh, it's, I mean, I physically can feel right now there's, there's parts of my person that are freeing up uh, and it's, you know, it's exciting. There's a freshness there uh, within my person. Exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. And Thank you. Yay. Yay. <laughs> some, some really deep, uh, course themes in here in your story, Bonnie, I, I think about the part in the course that talks about the face of innocence, where we live up here in the world and the world seems to happen to us. And then there's the underneath in the unconscious mind, the, the, the dream we dream in secret that, um, the Holy spirit says is draped in sin. And it's so horrific to look at these ideas of separation and sin, guilt, and fear that, uh, sometimes when it comes up, maybe, there's like the portal of alcohol that kind of lets lets that up, that kind of turns the valve, and it comes from this unconscious mind into the conscious mind, and it's so it's so hard to bear that we deny it's us and project it on the other, and we just can't stand it. It's so bad, and you know, the course says we all have this, um, but it's only like it's easier to see in our in our brother, and particularly in your story for sure, but it's. Uh, it's just, a, I, I actually see some today walking around in the St. Patrick's uh, Day uh, festivities, festivities have already started. And there's a lot of, you know, groups, people out drinking and, and a couple of them, you can see um, it's not, they're not having a good time. It's looking dark already. And uh, it's, it, and it made me think of that. It's so, it's so important for this, for this day. So it's really a powerful themes that we touched on here. Indeed. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Bonnie, what a, well, there's one thing we'd like to do to make it even more practical for the listeners. And that is when you get caught in what we call a forgiveness storm, or I'm saying ego storm, not a forgiveness storm. How, how do you counter that where something is just, it's just, you know, there's a burr under your saddle and you just don't want to forgive at the same time you realize it's the only way you can experience relief is there anything you do, you know, it sounds like as a massage therapist or dealing or helping people with trauma where you, you find some practice particularly helpful to get recentered? Yes. Uh, thank you for asking that, Matt. Absolutely. Uh, well, the, the easiest, uh, if I'm, I'm really caught up is I go for a walk, uh, rain, snow, sunshine, or states I'm in is sunshine. But um, I, I go for a walk and it could just be maybe 20 minutes. If it's in the middle of the night, I put on a podcast, uh, like Course in Miracles. Um, I am, I schedule uh, at least once or twice a month uh, massages. I also go to a saltwater float tank. So I float in saltwater for about an hour and then I go get about a 90 minute massage. And after that, you know, the world could come to an end and I'm, I'm, I, I'm really good with it. <laughs> You're blissed out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm blissed mm-hmm. out. <laughs> yeah. Is this a sensory uh, deprivation tank where it's like, there's no light coming in and everything and no yes. sound. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was a challenge at first, you know, it, it did 
touch a few, oh, can I do this? You know, a whole hour, this is a long time. But uh, I, I kept increasing the time. And so now I'm, I'm about up to 55 minutes. Uh, also, as I had mentioned, I'm involved, uh, I'm a coach and I'm involved in uh, what's called positive intelligence. And uh, this is actually, um, it works with the neural pathways in our, our brains. And there are uh, repetitions that we do, you know, sensory, sensory, uh, such as touching our fingertips. Uh, to give you a quick little example, um, on a lighter side, I'm an avid pickleball player. So if I'm getting into the competitive mode and uh, there's not a lot of forgiveness there, I start um, these repetitions and it it will calm my system down, reshifts why I am there and to have fun. And I do the same when I am working through an emotional uh, arena, such as forgiveness. Um, I. I have to be very honest. I and this could be because of my past. Um, I, I well, Tam brought up someone I haven't totally forgiven at this point, but I feel that at this point, uh, it's just about uh, keeping myself healthy. Um, I really have no uh, challenges as far as person to person. Um, to to be in the arena to forgive, uh, but I do know how to do it, and uh, you know those are the physical things that I do. Uh, something else, uh, you know, I eat real well. That's uh, very important, probably too well at times. Um, and I take time, uh, probably about five to six times a week of just sitting with the Holy Spirit, just sitting and listening. And I journal uh, quite often. Um, I'm always uh, trying to self-improve. Working with clients, that has been immense because it really takes me out of my world and I, I get to walk the labyrinth with them in their world. Um, volunteering is a, is another beautiful aspect uh, to uh, work on forgiveness. Uh, I do work with, uh, I have in the past worked with children that have been abused. Uh, that's a hard one. That's very difficult. And I've, I've worked through forgiving the perpetrators. Uh, in fact, my son, our son, who I was talking about, uh, he was sexually abused. So um, I'm sure there's more forgiveness around that that I could be working on. Uh, but to uh, process that, I help others that are going through uh, that challenge. So uh, those are a, a few of the things that I, I do to uh, uh, keep the awareness and keep the love and share it uh, as much as I possibly can. Yeah. Mm. Thank Wonderful. You, Thank you so much. And I'm sure the people who you uh, work with you are uh, sharing that love between you as the healing as well. I'm sure you're such a gift to each other. So thank you for, for doing that work. And it's not as much work. The more the more you know it's love and sharing of the love. So tremendous gratitude for extending that. Yeah. And Bonnie, you're probably already aware, but I spend a good bit of time in Scotland and the word Bonnie is pretty or beautiful. And your story was definitely a uh, a beautiful story of healing and forgiveness. So we thank you for that. And thank you for sharing your miracle voice. Truly, truly my honor. And yes, this is, this has uh, really opened up a lot for me and I'm excited about uh, keeping this close to my heart. And, yeah. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank for you for 
same. Thank you for sharing that love here and extending it. Thanks so much for listening today. Please subscribe to Miracle Voices by hitting the subscribe button on your podcast app. If you are enjoying these conversations, please consider leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or whatever podcast app you use. And lastly, please visit us at miraclevoices.org and join our newsletter so we can stay connected. Until the next podcast, I want to leave you with my favorite course quote, when you want only love, you will see nothing else. Nothing else.